uh, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Xiao Wei from Tsinghua University, and today it is my honor to present our work, uh, Grid Graph. A uh, graph can be used to express a uh, lot of models ranging from the online social networks, uh, the user item matrices like readings, uh, the hyperlinks between web pages, and uh, even to many uh, cutting edge scientific problems. Uh, as graph processing becoming more and more popular, uh, lots of graph processing frameworks came out. Uh, they can be roughly classified into three categories, uh, shared memory, uh, distributed and out of core. The three classes of solutions provide different features uh, and faces different challenges as well. Shared memory solutions are easy and uh, uh, are easy to use and deploy, but the capability is limited by uh, the me memory capacity of a single machine. Uh, distributed systems can scale to uh, solve large graphs, but uh, often need to resolve the imbalance problem, which is found in many real-world graphs. Uh, and for out-of-core systems, uh, the inevitable random access is the main challenge we are facing. Among all the three categories, out-of-core is obviously the most cost-effective one due to the fact that uh, disks are uh, several orders cheaper than memories in terms of capacity. Thus, our work con concentrates on how to improve out-of-core graph systems. Uh, as we just mentioned that the most important problem to solve in out-of-core systems is how to reduce uh, ran random I.O. and issue sequential ones as much as possible. Uh, uh, since the random disk access can be very expensive and uh, several orders uh, slower than sequential ones, uh, Xtreme has shown us how to achieve the maximum bandwidth by uh, uh, accessing the edges sequentially uh, from disks and uh, access vertices randomly but inside the fast memory. Uh, to achieve this goal, uh, we need to guarantee the locality of vertex accesses by partitioning. Uh, uh, just to mention that uh, this accept pattern can be applied to not only out-of-core situations, but also in-memory ones. Uh, Xtreme uses an edge-centric uh, scatter-gather processing model to accomplish the computation. Uh, in scatter phase, it streams each edge and uh, uh, appends updates to several streams. And in gather phase, uh, it streams each update and apply apply it to vertices. So our motivation comes from a single question that, is it possible that we can apply on-the-fly updates directly to vertices without writing out and uh, then streaming in the updates? Since updates can be in the same magnitude as edges, uh, they can occupy a large space and thus uh, take quite a long time to uh, spend on uh, I.O. Uh, during the whole computation. Uh, the answer seems certain if we can guarantee the locality of both uh, source and destination vertices when streaming. Uh, then we can just stream each edge and read vertex from source and uh, then apply updates onto destinations. Uh, our solution comes out uh, with a grid representation of graphs and uh, uses uh, dual sliding windows and the selective scheduling to reduce I.O. amount. Uh, we'll also discuss why uh, the two-level hierarchical partitioning is required and necessary. Uh, the grid representation is very simple. First, we partition the vertices into P equalized chunks. Then we partition uh, the edges into a P times P grid uh, by the source and the destination of each edge. The row corresponds to the source and the column corresponds to the destination. Uh, here we give a very simple example of a two times two representation of a very simple graph consisting of four vertices and seven edges. Uh, P is two here, thus uh, we have two vertex chunks and uh, uh, chunk one contains vertex one and two and chunk two contains vertex three and four. Uh, thus, the edge from uh, vertex 3 to vertex 2 will be uh, put into the second row and uh, the first column. 
Uh, by the way, this is why we call it a uh, grid graph. Uh, we can see that each block uh, corresponds to two chunks of vertex data, and we just need to fit them into memory for fast random access. Thus, with the edge grid, we can just stream the edges block by block and apply on the fly updates. Uh, different from the scatter gather based model, only one phase instead of two is required to uh, do the computation. Uh, next, we will talk about the dual sliding windows. We just said that each block corresponds to two vertex chunks, the source chunk and the destination chunk. Uh, actually, we can view them as two sliding windows. Uh, one slides as the row, uh, the row moves and the other slides as the column moves. Uh, grid graph X accesses the blocks in a column-oriented order, which can optimize our write amount in, uh, to only one pass over the destination vertices. This is a very important feature and a requirement from practical use, since write is often considered very expensive and uh, uh, or more harmful than reads, uh, especially for SSDs, because uh, uh, we will face the wearing out problem. Uh, now let's see a uh, very simple example of how the dual sliding windows work. Uh, we use page rank on the example graph as an illustration. Uh, due to the time lim limit, I will omit the algorithm details of page rank here and the concentrates on uh, the I/O accesses of edges and the vertices. Uh, you just need to know here that uh, PR and the degree uh, refers to the data that we need to read from sources, and the new PR is the data that we need to apply to destinations. Uh, first, uh, block one one is streamed from the disk. Uh, then we uh, thus we need to uh, bring the source chunk one and destination chunk one into memory. Thus, we need two edge accesses and two accesses on source vertex data and two for destination vertex data. Next, block 2.1 is streamed. Since the column doesn't change, we just need to uh, bring the source chunk from disk to memory. Thus, no I.O. will occur upon the destination vertex data. Then we move on to the next column and block one, two is streamed, so we need to bring source chunk one and the destination chunk two into memory. Uh, before we can cache the destination chunk two, we first need to write back destination chunk one since it is dirty during the previous computations. Then we need to uh, stream the block two, two and the cache uh, source chunk two. Finally, as all the blocks have been streamed, we need to uh, flush all the dirty vertex data to the disk. Uh, from the above pr procedures, we can see that we only require one pass over the edges, um, P passes over the source vertices, and one pass over the, de the destinations to complete one iteration. Thus, the overall amount will be like this formula. Uh, just want to mention again that uh, this applies not only to out of core situations but also in memory ones. Uh, also, we can get an implication that P uh, should be the minimum value that enables uh, the required vertex data to be fit into memory. Uh, but is this really the right value we should use for P? Uh, before further discussion on the selections of P, let's first see another usage of uh, our grid grid representation. Uh, we implement selective scheduling in grid graph to skip edge blocks with no active edges. This is a very simple but important optimization and can be used for lots of algorithms like BFS, WCC, and many, many others. Let's take BFS as an example. We add a bool array active uh, to indicate the activeness of each vertex. We start BFS from vertex one so in the first iteration, only vertex one is active. Thus, only blocks in the first row uh, are accessed. Then in the second iteration, vertex two and three are both active, so we have to access all the four blocks. Uh, in the third iteration, vertex four is active. Thus, we only need to access the blocks in the second row. Uh, we can see that uh, 
an overall of 14 edges is accessed to get a BFS3 from vertex 1. Uh, we should notice that we can only do the selective scheduling, the granularity of blocks. Within each block, we have to access all the edges inside. So the number of partitions P is very essential to the effect of selective scheduling. We can see that the effect becomes better with more fine-grained partitioning. But this, however, gives us another implication that a larger, P, a val a larger value of P is preferred if we want to achieve uh, good selective scheduling. Uh, this forces us to a dilemma on the selection of P. Uh, since a smaller value means few accesses on vertices, but poorer locality and the less scheduling uh, potential we might get, while a larger value means better locality and more selective scheduling opportunities, but uh, more access on vertices is also not what we want. What's more, uh, we only used a two-level memory hierarchy when talking about the selections on P, while in, well, in real-world scenarios, the disk memory cache hierarchy is the case we should discuss. So how should we choose the granularity of the grid? And is it possible to achieve all the good features we want in the uh, discussions uh, we just talked? Uh, the two-level hierarchical partitioning is uh, the answer. We introduce a new parameter Q, which is decided based on the size of vertices and the memory capacity. P is determined according to the size of vertices and the capacity of last level cache. Uh, so we can see that P is uh, often uh, much larger than Q. We first partition the edges into a fine grained P times, times P grid and then group the small blocks into larger ones to form the uh, Q times Q grid. Here we show an e example of P equals four and uh, Q equals two. Uh, by doing this, we can achieve not only the good properties of both coarse grained and uh, fine grained partitioning, but also uh, make our system adapt to the three level memory hierarchy. Uh, the programming interface of GridGraph is very simple and easy to use. The core is two streaming functions over the vertices and edges. Uh, on the right, uh, we show the implementation of page rank in GridGraph. Uh, then I will show some evaluation, e re evaluation results. Uh, we conduct our experiments on EC2, I2X large, and D2X large instances. Uh, we use four applications and the four real world graphs to evaluate the performance. Uh, this slide shows the performance uh, compared with GraphG and Xtreme, two state of the art, out of core graph processing systems. Uh, we limit the available memory to eight gigabyte to illustrate their out of core performance. Uh, these charts show the relative run times of different applications using different uh, systems on different data sets. Uh, for the Yahoo Graph, since some applications take too long to finish uh, on GraphG and the Xtreme, thus we only give the absolute runtime run table instead. We can see that Greek graph is often two to three times faster and for very large graphs like Yahoo, the for performance gap can be even bigger. Uh, this figure shows the IO throughput of a 10 minute interval during the computation of page rank on the Yahoo graph. Uh, we can see that Xtreme and the Greek graph can utilize the full bandwidth while uh, graph G cannot fully utilize uh, due to the f fragmented access pattern across many shards. Uh, this chart shows the effect of dual sliding windows. You can see that by streaming over the edges only once and uh, no need to mutate the edges or writing out the updates, both our input amount and output amount is the minimal among all the three systems for large scale graphs like Yahoo that vertices cannot be fit into memory. Uh, this shows the effect of selective scheduling. You can see that in Xtreme with the convergence, uh, it still needs to stream over all the edges while a uh, grid graph can skip more and more edges in later iterations. 
Uh, then let's see the impact of the two partitioning parameters P and Q on the performance when all the data, uh, first we s uh, see the impact of uh, P on the performance when all the data can be fit into memory. We can find that the optimal performance can be achieved around P equals 32 where needed vertex data can be fit into the L3, cr L3 cr cache of the instance we use. Uh, we can see that smaller values leads to uh, poorer performance due to uh, poor locality, and the larger values will, rep will produce excessive memory accesses on source vertex data. Then let's see uh, the impact of Q on out of core situations. We can see that since uh, half of the vertices can already be fit into memory, larger values will only cause excessive I.O. on the source vertices, which lead to poorer performance. Uh, we also compare our system with distributed ones. We can see that uh, by using grid graph on a larger I2.4 X large instance, which contains four SSDs, we can achieve even better performance than Power Graph and the Graph X on a 16 node cluster and it costs more than four times cheaper. Uh, in conclusion, the reduction of I.O. amount is the key to the performance gain uh, in grid graph. And uh, by using the grid representation and the door sliding windows method, we can reduce I.O. amount, especially the writes, uh, which is a very useful feature. Selective scheduling also helps a lot in reducing the unnecessary I.O. operations and can be used uh, for many, many traversal-based applications. And finally, the two-level hierarchical partitioning solves the dilemma of the granularity of partitioning and is a natural solution to the three-level memory hierarchy. And uh, that's it. Thanks for your listening, and I'm glad to take your questions. Uh, great talk. So um, it looks like in your uh, system, uh, do you only support asynchronous algorithms or do you also support synchronous algorithms where you would uh, sort of you know, write out all the updates and then uh, read them back in? Uh, well, it depends on how to uh, implement the algorithm right. uh, because uh, actually the program can see all the vertex data uh, as a global shared one. So uh, for, for example, in our WCC implementation, we just propagate the latest label that uh, each vertex can see in the iteration. Okay. So because uh, so at least with extreme, that includes some, uh, support algorithms like minimum cost spanning trees, where you actually have to write out things like tree edges, you know, that you form the graph. So did you look at some more complex algorithms, or did you? Uh, yes, uh, uh, we we did not implement this uh, feature, but uh, I think it it can also be accomplished uh, by uh, by uh, partition uh, by an, an online partitioning of the generated uh, new edges. All right. It's interesting work. Uh, have you looked at this in um, reference to uh, hypergraphs with hyper edges? Uh, what do you mean by hap hyper? So a hypergraph is basically where you have an, an edge that actually a single edge that encompasses multiple vertices. Uh, I'm not quite uh, familiar with that. Okay. An edge which has not two edges, not an edge with two edges, but let's say three edges. So you can think about it as, as like creating a group in effect. You might have your 10, 20 vertices and a single edge that surrounds them all. Oh. If you were, say you were creating some type of group relationship. Okay, uh, we can talk about it offline. Okay. Well, let's thank the speaker again.